Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 139 and we're going to be continuing learning on Drupal Commerce. We're going to be focusing on product displays today. As always, I'm Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also go to CodeKarate.com, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and learn how you can support Code Karate. So last time, if you remember, we created two product types, one called hats and one called shirts. And we also added four different hat products, a white, pink, yellow, and red hat. Today we're going to be going over product displays, which basically is how the end user sees the product. So when they go to a specific product page on your website, that is controlled through a product display. A One product display could reference multiple products. So for instance, we may have one hat product that actually allows a user through a series of drop downs or select boxes to select which product in the back end, whether it's the white, pink, yellow, or red hat, they are actually going to be purchasing. So they see one display and based on the selections on that page, they are actually selecting which SKU or which individual unique product they're going to be adding into their cart. So I pr as, as you can see, the products section is its own entity called product type. A product display is a content type. So we're going to have to start by adding in a new content type. And we're just going to create one called product display. The important thing to note here is we could have a specific product display for each different type of product. Maybe we want a hats product display and a t-shirts product display. But since we want our product displays to look pretty much the same, it doesn't really matter what type of product they're buying, we're going to have the same layout. We're just going to use a single product display to keep it simple and to keep the, the actual display without having to you know, manage multiple different or display pages. So you can think of this as the product display is the actual front end user facing. The product types are actually the back end what products are actually being purchased from the system and hopefully you'll be able to understand a little bit more if it's still a little blurry on what that exactly means once we get through this example so we're going to create a product display content type we can set whatever else we want here for settings I'm going to uncheck this I will turn comments off and I'll go ahead and save the content type. The important field here that you need for any product display content type is something called a product reference field. And you need to make sure you have the Drupal Commerce product reference module on in order for this to work. I'm going to go ahead and just call this product. So it's going to be field underscore product. This is the product reference field and we could use an autocomplete, a select list, or check boxes and radio buttons. I'll use a select list to start and we will click save. Click save on that page and now we get to select well first we'll go through these these options. This is the label. We do want this to be required because they have to actually reference a product. Here we want render fields from reference products when viewing this entity and this is something we do want to keep checked. For product types that can be referenced, we're going to go ahead and say we can reference hat and shirt products. If we wanted to set a default value, we could. And also we want to set how many actual products we can reference. And in this case, we're going to set unlimited because, as I mentioned before, we could have one hat that has four different products that need to be referenced. Maybe they're four different colors of the same hat so we would only want one display but we want four different products to be referenced so we're gonna go ahead and hit save there and now we have a title a body and a product we could add any other fields we want to this product display the important thing to keep in mind here the difference between the product display and the product type and where you would add specific fields is you basically have to think of it this way. If it's going to be different for each unique product, whether it's that specific pink hat or white hat, if there's going to be a difference on each individual product, 
you would need to add the field to the product type. If it's something you only need to add on the product display, and not necessarily to each individual product, then you could add the field, of course, to this product display content type. So now we can go ahead and we're going to come back to the home page and we're going to add a product display. And for, for right now I'm going to reference each product one to one. So basically I'm going to have a product display for the white hat, the pink hat, the red hat, and the yellow hat. Just so we have uh, something to get started with. We're eventually going to change that and show you how you can reference multiple products as well. So if I want to start with the pink hat. Give it a description. And now here I can select which product I want to reference. As we mentioned before, you could select multiple. We're going to start with just selecting the pink hat. And we're going to go ahead and click Save. Now you can see there's a nice pink hat. And everything shows up the way we would expect. It has the product reference. It pulls in the price from the product that is referenced. And it also pulls in the image. So you notice we didn't have those fields on that product display content type but because we referenced that product it was pulled in. The next thing I'm going to want to do is, well I'll go ahead and I'll finish adding these other product displays just so we have them. I'm not going to bother adding a description for all of these but of course if you're actually creating products for a live store you're going to need to probably have descriptions. So I created the white hat. We'll create one for yellow hat. And then last but not least, the red hat. Okay, so now we have our four different products that have been created. We're going to come in and turn on some more Drupal Commerce modules. We're going to make sure we turn on the cart and the checkout because we want customers to actually be able to start buying these products. We're also going to create customer or turn on customer and customer UI as well as line item UI, order and order UI. And I think that's enough to get us going on the next step. Each one of these is pretty self-explanatory what it does, and you can read the description, and it will tell you what each of these checkboxes is actually doing to your Drupal Commerce website. So, for instance, you cannot create orders until you've turned on the order module, and the order UI has the user interface for actually managing and editing orders. So now that we have those selected we're gonna save and this will of course turn those modules on we're gonna come back to this page you'll see that nothing has changed yet but what we really want here is to get the add to cart form to show up and so the add to cart form is going to allow the user of the site or whoever's looking at the product to actually add the product to their cart and then eventually proceed with the checkout process. So in order to do that we need to come back into our product display and we're going to go to manage display and remember we added this product reference field. The format by default is just to provide the title and the link. You could of course select to show the SKU with a link or without a link you could display the actual rendered product but what, we're, what we are interested in is this add to cart form. Once you select add to cart form you have a couple different options. So if we want to allow a quantity widget text field we can check this box which in this case we will so the user can actually select or enter in how many hats in this case they want to purchase. We can have it attempt to combine like products on the same line item in the cart. We'll leave that checked and you can have it show attribute widgets even if the add to cart form only represents one product and because we don't have any attribute widgets in this case we're not going to select that so we'll go ahead and hit update 
and we'll scroll down and click save and now we will come back here and now you can see we have the quantity box and an add to cart button so if we come in and we leave it at quantity of one and click add to cart you'll notice that it said red hat has been added to your cart I come to the cart and you can see that it says I have a red hat the price here's the quantity an option to remove and the total amount so you can see now we have product pages working and you can now add those products to your cart if we come in and look at some of the other hats such as the yellow hat and I want to add two yellow hats I can go ahead and add to cart there you can see that now we have two yellow hats if I come back to the red hat and add another item we come back in you'll see that these have been combined and now the quantity has changed from one to two you can of course remove it by using these remove buttons and you have your basic working product display you'll notice it doesn't necessarily look pretty yet there's not a lot of uh, thought that's been put into how this is laid out yet and that's something we'll cover uh, in the next few episodes of the daily dose of Drupal next time we're actually going to go over how to add product attributes to specific product displays and then from there we'll continue on how to make this page look a little bit nicer so that's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal. We'll see you next time.